just about every measure of America's security apparatus, including 28,000 law enforcement personnel, will be on the ground in Washington when President Obama hands off his office to Donald Trump on Friday, a near army in place to protect the leaders of all branches of government gathered in one place outside. And while officials stress there's no specific credible threat to this inauguration, tonight, due to a quirk in America's rules for succession, questions remain about just who would be in charge if an attack hit the incoming president, vice president, and congressional leaders just as the transfer of power is underway. Here you have a very confusing line of succession. There. According to the Constitution, if the president and vice president are killed or incapacitated, next in line is the House Speaker, then the president pro tempore of the Senate. But what if something happened to them at the inauguration, too? After that, it goes down the list of cabinet secretaries, starting with Secretary of State. On the day of the inauguration, as a precaution, a cabinet secretary called the designated presidential successor will not attend the inauguration, ready to step in if something happens. But it won't be a Trump cabinet secretary, since none of them have been confirmed yet. It will be an Obama appointee. No word from the White House on who that will be on Friday. Does the line of succession switch to the new president's lineup at noon? In the uh, inauguration, you have two lines of succession, one for the Barack Obama administration, which is still in place, and one which really won't be in place until Donald Trump is, is inaugurated, uh, comes into office, and actually formally nominates, and the Senate confirms his people. You might actually end up with a president from the prior administration because of a tragedy. Adding to the confusion, by noon Friday, all of Obama's cabinet secretaries are expected to resign. John Kerry, the current Secretary of State, would be the first cabinet secretary in the line of succession, but he's out of office by noon. Donald Trump's pick for Secretary of State, Rex Tillerson, may not be confirmed for another week or two. So who would be Secretary of State on Friday afternoon? According to State Department sources, the job would fall to the highest-ranking non-political official in the department, the Undersecretary for Political Affairs, Tom Shannon. One of the most obscure possibilities is that someone who is an acting Secretary of State, someone lower down the line of the Secretary of State, uh, State Department today, uh, assumes the acting Secretary of State position, is in the line, and the worst happens, and that person becomes president at least for a while. The uncertainty creates the potential for chaos, high theater, or a hit TV drama. Sir, you are now the president of the United States. In ABC's Designated Survivor, Kiefer Sutherland plays an obscure cabinet secretary, unexpectedly thrust into the presidency after an attack at the Capitol during a State of the Union address. Former Agriculture Secretary Dan Glickman once played that role in real life. In 1997, during an address by President Clinton to Congress, he was the designated survivor. He left Washington and went to his daughter's apartment in Manhattan. But he wasn't alone. The role is a serious one, and he says he was accompanied by a doctor a military officer with access to the nuclear codes and the Secret Service. But once the president's speech was over, Glickman declined a ride from his security detail. The security personnel left. Glickman had to hail a cab in bad weather. I couldn't escape the irony that three hours before, I had the potential of being the most powerful person on the face of the earth, and now I was in a situation where I couldn't even get a cab.